Hey y'all, Infinite Enzo here with Knox Knife Mods, and today we're going to talk about how we got this Formax from this Formax. Now, honestly, the best way to show you the front half is for you to watch this video that I'm going to pop in right here. But if you want to just check this one out on its own, it's totally fine. This is just kind of a standalone episode about some more stuff I did to the same knife. So, without further ado, guys, uh, let's jump into it. I do have to warn you, I, I shot this video on a bunch of different locations, so it's pretty scattershot, so most of the audio for me is actually voiceover, which I don't normally do, but I think it worked out fine. Um, if you guys are cool with that, let me know if, it, if the video's uh, quality is fine. Yeah, just let me know if y'all dig it. Anyways, let's get into it, y'all. So here's our handle scale for the 4MAX Scout. Now I've already worked one of these handle scales. I wasn't sure if it was going to work out so I didn't want to record that in case it ended up being kind of a botch job. But it actually turned out pretty cool. Uh, so this is the, the next scale that I'm going to be working. Um, here's a shot of the liners which are <laughs> pretty rusty. Um, I think it's just surface rust so I'm pretty sure that's going to just clean right off. But I have used and abused this Formax Scout, so we're trying to breathe new life into it. So that's kind of the goal here. Uh, but yeah, so maybe like a light spray of uh, WD-40 and then just kind of scrubbing those rust spots off I think should be, should be fine. Uh, so, so that's what I'm hoping for. But uh, in a second here I'm going to drop in the, uh, the scale that I've already worked and uh, here it is right here. And I know right now it looks kind of ridiculous and, and junky, but once I dye it, that's kind of when the magic happens. When you put the dye in, everything becomes uniform and it starts to make a lot more sense. So we're going to repeat this pattern on this uh, top scale and uh, I think you guys are going to dig it. Um, I do apologize for the way this is shot because I'm having to do this in a, a different uh, area than I normally do, uh, my modding that is. So uh, let's cut to that and you guys will uh, see kind of what I'm doing with the Dremel. So as far as the technique goes with the Dremel, the look I'm going for is claw marks or kind of fang marks if that makes sense. Uh, we're starting wide at the top of the sanding and it's narrowing out as it kind of goes into the handle. Y'all can see this here, I'm basically putting down a, a base and then I'm putting in those fangs or claw marks kind of from there. The wonderful thing about working with a Dremel like this is you can be a little bit random and it should still look pretty cool. On to the blade. So the theme with the blade is I'm basically just trying to get rid of the cold steel maker's marks and the laser etchings and really give it that custom look. In order to do that, I'm going to make a random rock carve pattern or really it's going to be more like the ice carve pattern like I did on my Cold Steel 8010 and that's going to go on the flats. Now I'm also going to add a couple of fang or claw marks on the top of the, uh, I guess the swedge you would say, just to give it a little bit of aesthetic differentiation. Uh, and then after that is all done it's going to be acid washed and stone washed. Uh, now of course when you're using a Dremel like this, always want to wear gloves and definitely want to tape the blade off so you don't get cut. Uh, just the basic safety stuff. I also wear a mask just to make sure that none of the tiny little particles from sanding you know, get into my, uh, my lungs or anything like that. In this shot of the knife, you can really see here how much it resembles the finish that I did on the 8010. I'll try to drop in a photo of that real quick. 
but uh, yeah, kind of that ice carve pattern rather than a rock carve. It's much more vertical. And as you can see, the rust spots came pretty well off of these liners, so I think the liner's gonna be fine. Now on to the lock bar. As you can see here, I've already done some jimping on this. That was a while ago that I did that. Um, and I'm gonna redo it. We're gonna have a shot of that here in the video, so you'll be able to see my method for that. Right now what I'm doing though is I'm gonna put a rock carve pattern on the areas of the lock bar that have not been jimped yet. So that's gonna be this little top section and then also the long stretch in the back that your thumb comes into contact with to disengage that lock. So what we see here is the lock bar. I'm about to reset the jimping using a checkering file here. You can get these on Amazon or eBay for around 30 to $40. And uh, it's been a really useful tool for me. I don't do jimping very often, but I've found that for, for my intents, this works great. And it's wonderful to just have a simple hand tool that can do the job. Uh, of course, you need a vise to do this properly. And it also helps to build yourself kind of a jig or a guide. Uh, however, I find that I can do it, for my purposes, I can do it fine enough without a guide. Uh, you just want to take your time with it. Make sure that you are resetting those edges of the file properly into the grooves that you're cutting into your material. Uh, but yeah, I'm pretty sure I've never actually shown this in a video before, so um, happy to be able to show you guys kind of how to do this. And again, my method's not perfect, but for a simple job that you want to do on one of your own tools, I think that this is a great way to do it. You always want to make sure that you're just moving in one direction. You don't want to drag it up and then back. Just keep moving in one direction. Keep resetting that file in the grooves and you should be good to go. Just try to keep your lines straight. And of course, that's where a jig or a guide would help. Here's our close up, and again, once this is acid washed, this is gonna look even better. All right, so it's time for everybody's favorite long-winded activity, acid washing. So what we're gonna do here is, uh, I've got my blade here, and as you can see, I've used a Sharpie to mask off all of the areas that I don't want to take an etch. A lot of people use fingernail polish, but I find that it's a lot of trouble to deal with fingernail polish, and I think a Sharpie works just fine for my purposes. Uh, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna unscrew this cap. That's my acid on the left there inside the bucket. Uh, it's a mixture of ferric chloride and water in a one-to-one -one ratio. I keep it inside the bucket because it won't eat through plastic, uh, so it's, it's better to keep it inside plastic objects like that for safety reasons. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to take the blade here on a bent coat hanger. We're just going to let it dip in that acid for, uh, I believe about five minutes is the total I ended up with. The blade steel is Austin A, so it will take an etch fairly readily. Uh, but yeah, that's about it. Just let it sit here, let it, let, let it wait and let it etch. Five minutes later. On the right, you'll see my, in that disgusting coffee cup, is a uh, mixture of water and baking soda to neutralize, which we're gonna do right now. Let's have a look at that finish. So as you can see, it's gotten a good bit darker. Uh, I, for one, love the finish of an acid etch. I know a lot of people prefer satin finishes, but to me, it's just a very attractive finish, particularly when you're going for kind of an aggressive theme on a modded knife. I think it's the perfect way to do it. So we'll let that sit in the, uh, in the neutralizing bath there for a little bit. I'm also going to acid etch the lock bar here, as you can see, that's going in. And in a minute, we're going to get to the liners and the pocket clip as well. So we're not going to stone wash the lock bar. We're just going to leave that with its acid finish uh, 
for one thing, I don't want to knock the jimping down that I put on there, but also I just think it's, it's one of those things, it's such a minute piece that it doesn't have to have the stone wash effect. Uh, but we're going to get the blade out, we're going to put it into that container on the right, which contains ceramic media that I got at Harbor Freight. And then we're just going to shake the hell out of it. <laughs> And up next are the liners in the pocket clip. Now, I made a bit of a mistake here just trying to jam them all into one group because I was being impatient. The problem with that is they need to be fairly separated. Obviously, if they're overlapping each other too much, the acid mixture is not going to get in between them and you're going to have funky areas that didn't get etched. Uh, so everything turned out fine in the end. I had to re-dip a couple things. Ultimately, yeah, I just want to stress that if you're doing this yourself, don't try to group too many things on your, your dip there because they'll, they'll overlap too much. All right, so as we take this out here, we get a nice uniform finish. I'm not going to stone wash these either since they're going to be on the inside of the knife. Um, and there's no need to really have that effect on an interior piece. Uh, but I think they turned out really cool. And again, it's going to all contribute to that overall aggressive sort of theme of the knife. Um, yeah, so uh, I think you guys, when, when you guys see it all come together, I think you're gonna really dig it. Okay, y'all, so I already did the dyeing off camera. Sorry about that, but I'll show y'all how I did it real quick. But I wanted to just show you how it turned out now. It actually looks better in natural light. Right now I'm under the fluorescent light in my kitchen. But, uh, but yeah, I think that it really ties everything together much better. I know it can look scary when you first start carving, but once you do the dye job, uh, it really pulls everything together and it, and it unifies the look. So anyway, how I do my dyeing, uh, I've got this electric kettle over here. I just load that up with about a liter of water, set that to boil. Once it starts boiling to a full rolling boil, I pour the water in this old coffee cup. Uh, that's all I use this for now is dyeing. Uh, it's nice to have something narrow and not like a big pot because obviously the more water that you have to use to be able to dunk the handles, uh, the more diluted your, your dye mixture is going to be. And as you can see here, this fits right into that narrow coffee cup just perfect. So that's why I like that coffee cup so much. And the dye I used for this was Rit Scarlet. Um, Rit Dye More is typically a better choice with handle materials because it's made for synthetic materials, whereas Rit Dye itself is really just made for fabric, but it works great. Um, it does work great on handles. So anyway, guys, I just want to tell y'all real quick. So yeah, fill this up to the brim, put in a, just a, I just eyeball it honestly, and then I mix it together with a spoon. And uh, that's really important that you mix it. But yeah, that's about it. And then you dip those in. I had these in for about a minute, uh, and that's all it needed. So. Anyway, guys, uh, that's just want to show y'all real quick. That's how you do the dye. All right, we've got all of our pieces laid out on the table, and now it's time to reassemble. As you can see, pretty much everything here has been hit. I've also dyed the backspacer black. Again, just trying to have a nice uh, sort of, not monochrome is not the right term, but just everything's kind of a matte color. It's very dark. Um, I find that particularly with plastic pieces or grivery pieces, the darker colors tend to look better on them than bright colors. Bright colors tend to highlight their imperfections and their seam lines and things like that. Darker colors hide that a little bit better. So uh, yeah, I think it's a great look. You can see everything just has that nice uniformity to it. And uh, as you see the blade in the background there, I think it turned out fantastic with the stone wash. I ended up washing that in, in the, uh, the ceramic media for about three minutes total, I think, but that's three minutes of constant aggressive shaking. Now that ceramic media will give you a much more aggressive finish versus like pebbles or some like small stones, which will give you a little bit more of a softer texture. Uh, but uh, again, I'm, I'm saying it for like a thousand time, but I was really going for aggression with this, with this design, or design, with this mod, and uh, it fits the bill. So let's get this knife reassembled and uh, we will uh, get the final product in hand here. Once we sharpen it, of course, that blade after stone washing, you, you have to resharpen the blade. There's no easy way out of that.
this is honestly my least favorite part of any modding process is it's resharpening. I hate resharpening. Um, you know, when you take a blade that's already sharp and you touch it up, that can be enjoyable. But when you're resharpening a blade that has been utterly, the edge has been utterly destroyed, it's not fun because you're obviously you're, you're rebuilding the edge from the ground up. So what I like to use, as you can see, it's a Ken Onion workshop with a belt grinder attachment. I know a lot of people hate uh, belt systems, motorized systems. I find that if you run this system on its absolute lowest setting, you're, you're less likely to make any mistakes. Now, of course, experience helps. So the best thing you can do if you're interested in motorized systems, get yourself some cheap knives that you can really test out on and work your way up through the grits, get a feel for it. You never want to be on the top end of this thing or it will eat your blade alive. So again, lowest setting, nice and slow, low and slow. Uh, just take it easy, check the blade on almost every pass, make sure that you're not doing damage to it and you're gonna have a, you're gonna have a great time, honestly. I love the edges that my Ken Onion Workshop puts on, on, the, on the blades that I use, but you do need the belt grinder attachment. Don't use the standard workshop because it's just not, I don't think it's properly set up. Get the belt grinder attachment, it's going to do a great job for you. As you can see, I'm working my way up through the grits and then I reset my angle on that little platform uh, right behind the belt. Uh, it's a great system, I think, it, I think it's, for what it is, I think it's wonderful. And one thing to note, that if you do work your way up through the belts properly, you will get a mirror finish, particularly on ingot steels like OS 10, OS 8, 154CM, VG10, things like that, you'll get wonderful mirror finishes. Okay, back to the vise. What we're doing here is we are going to reattach the thumb studs. Now the reason I took those off, you could leave them on if you wanted them to have the same finish as the blade, but I've always been a big fan of dark acid washes with satin thumb studs. I think it's a great look. So that's what we did here. I removed them ahead of time uh, and I basically used my, my wife's old straightening iron uh, just because it gets up to about 450 degrees. So if you apply that to the studs for let's say two or three minutes, it will loosen up the Loctite enough that you can put this thing in the vise and uh, screw those things right off. Uh, so anyway, we're going to hand tighten to the point that it feels fairly tight and then we'll do the rest of it in the vise. I know all you safety people are going to freak out here because I take the blade out to do this. Um, I, honestly, I'm at this point where I don't stress about knife edges a whole lot, which maybe is a bad thing. Uh, I should probably be more vigilant. Um, but if it's just me in the house and I'm working on a knife, I just don't stress about it too much. Uh, so we'll get that tight in here. I'm using the leather, of course, to keep the jaws of the vise from chewing up the uh, thumb studs. But yeah, that, this is my kind of, the way I do this. I know, again, I'm not the most professional person in the world, but it works just fine. Get those thumb studs nice and tight, and, uh, and yeah, we'll move on to the final shots here of how, how this mod turned out. I think it turned out really cool. So here's kind of an indoor shot for you guys with indoor lighting. Uh, I think it turned out really cool. You can see what I mean about how the scales look after you dye them. It's a little scary at first when you're going away at them with the Dremel, but once you get the dye on there, everything looks much more nice and uniform. The blade turned out great with the stone wash, and the action is still really good. So let's get an outdoor shot here. As you can see, it just it looks killer in the sunlight. I love it. Uh, nice. Uh, uniform look and you can see a closer look at the jimping here I think it turned out awesome and uh, yeah I just I love the look of it so this mod is the blood eagle mod I think it turned out really cool uh, and I, I really hope you guys like the effect <laughs>